Hi, my name is Dr. Stephanie Lomali, and today we're going to discuss how to do crown preps and provisionalization. Okay, to create a putty matrix, you want to use equal amounts of base and catalyst. We're going to mix these two together. After you get a solid mixture, you want to take a small piece of the mixture and apply it to the tooth you want to work on. We're going to be working on number three and so you can push it down to make sure that you have all of the occlusal surface. Okay. But it's going to be too thin so then you apply the rest of your bulk and you're going to adapt it. Okay once it's set you can remove it and you'll be able to see the internal surface should be looking exactly like the surface of the tooth. If you look at three, you can see because right there I actually took a small piece of material and I pushed it against the tooth to encircle the entire tooth. It was completely captured. But if you look at two, because that's where I just adapted it, there's a small gapping. Now, the better that it is captured exactly as the tooth is, the less you're gonna have to trim. For an area like that, if we were actually working on two, you would have to trim that off of your provisional. It's ideal if you make two matrixes. Then you can use one for your provisional. Then you can use the other one as a reduction guide. When you're making it as a reduction guide, you wanna make sure that the border touches the vestibule of the cast or of the patient. You want to section to where you can evaluate multiple aspects. So this is cut into thirds. You can also cut it simply in half or you can cut it vertically depending on what you need to evaluate. For your provisional, you can go ahead and cut where the gingiva is. You don't need the excess. This will allow you to instantly take off all excess material so you don't have to trim as much. So after you've trimmed everything, you can have more control over what you remove. For the reduction guide, you can also trim the inner proximal portion to allow for better seating. Here it allows you to see how much tooth structure has been removed. Each additional reduction guide can be added or chained. Prior to placing integrity into the matrix to create a provisional, you want to confirm that it fully seats and that you can also have the space to remove any excess. Once you can confirm that it is cut properly and seats fully, then you can fabricate your provisional. Another form of creating a matrix is to bleed off the first amount and to use PVS material or heavy body or you can Regisil blue mousse. Insert it fully into the patient's mouth and then you can also have the patient bite. This is how the triple tray matrix comes out. It's very nice because you don't get a lot of excess. It comes right to the margins and the really nice part is how thin it is. You can even see through it when you fill it with integrity and you insert it intraorally. You ask the patient to bite. When they bite into it, you ask them to bite hard into their normal bite. And that's actually gonna allow for it to be both fully seated, but also for them to be biting in their normal form, leading to less occlusal reduction, which means faster provisional. Bleed off a small amount and then apply the rest into your putty matrix. Another method you can do is to apply a small amount to the margin. Then you're going to seat and wait a minute. Okay, so you wanna test it. Intraorally, keep in mind that you only want to have it in the mouth 
for about 60 seconds. Extra orally, that time's gonna be slightly different. Once this material has set enough, you can simply drag your explorer under and lift off. Okay. And you can do the same on the lingual. That simply flicks off. Keep in mind, without having the excess cut off, that is what you would have had to drill off. Now you can remove, and the provisional should remove. Another technique also to ensure that you don't get locked into the undercuts is when you have it in that one minute period is to seat and unseat your provisional. So that would be, you would like lift up very small. So can you see how this is the only flash that was produced? Now in real life that wouldn't happen because you would have removed it. This is actually the part that smushed between the pink tissue that I could not remove. So that happened because it was a type of dot. If this was in a real person or if we were using a type of dot with the pink hard tissue, then we would not have had this flash. All of the flash would have been removed. Once the tooth is set, you can pull on the matrix to release it. So you wanna use a red pencil to trace the internal line angle, and you wanna trim back until that marking. You can do that for everywhere where there's flash. Avoiding the contact, you can trim. Now once you get close enough, most of it will flick off as it gets too thin. And I'm holding it kind of at a 45 degree angle. And then once it flicks off, you're at the proper dimension. So alternatively, you can also use a soft flex disc. Avoiding the contact. So I'm trying not to touch right there, right in the center. Okay, so I've come from this angle and I've come from this side, but I've avoided touching the center. Now, in a big bulbous spot like that, again, it's a little bit bigger. Still flicks off. Just like we did for before with the tooth using the soft flex disc. So going each color. See how shiny that gets? Okay, so pour your pumice into a small cup, and then you're going to mix it up. Make sure you, that you remove any of the blockout wax if you are doing this in SimLab or intraorally. You can use a scaler. 